um, what proportion of uh, the Brazilian crop uh, 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 is uh, affected by drought, which is robuster production? I suppose that question is directed to either, either uh, uh, maybe one maybe or you, two. Maybe you both can give a, a quick answer. Thank you. In terms of the in terms of the area impacted, it's mostly the Arapaga area in, in Minas Gerais. And also remember some of the robusta areas there is more irrigation than in the traditional Arabica areas. And that's why it's been the Arabica market that surged much more right now and is responding greater uh, to the problem than robusta prices. The only, the only thing I can still add is that uh, the robusta areas already suffered from drought last year. So, and, and on top of it, there is a slight area increase. So. As far as robusta is concerned, uh, we indeed see a small rise in uh, output in uh, our forecast, even a sl small rise in uh, output in Brazil in 14-15 uh, due to the catch-up effect from the drought affected 13-14 crop. And as Judy said, uh, the rain problems are um, more more um, concentrated to the Arabica areas, uh, Minas Gerais uh, uh, most prominently than Espirito Santo, where most of uh, the robusta crop is concerned. Uh, if, if you remember to one of the slides in his period to Santo, there was even um, excess rainfall, especially in December. So uh, the problems there are not so severe. Or not but it, severe. it was very dry there in February, wasn't it? In his period to Santo. Uh, yes, a big it was. Red line there. It, it was. It was dry, but it was, I think, not as dry as in Minas Gerais. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Are there other questions or remarks? This gentleman, all in the back. Hello. Um, my name is uh, Lee Byers from uh, Fed Trade International. <laughs> um, just uh, an observation. One of the charts earlier on showed uh, consumption and showing that it was somewhat independent of economic factors and so on. Um, I, I guess the challenge is that when those economic crises come, then in fact what happens is the challenge goes back to the supply in. So maybe that's the challenge. We're talking about sustainable production here, and some have uh, described how they go about that. Perhaps that's part of the challenge is that um, if we just focus on consumption, um, we can ride out the storms, but actually the storms tend to hit at the producer end. I, is that the challenge that we're facing? Um, I, if, if I got your question right, uh, I would uh, agree that uh, the challenge um, is, is, is indeed uh, uh, more on the producer's uh, side uh, um, to, to ride through the crisis. Uh, and indeed, uh, the consumption, um, as I pointed out, is more or less uh, not very much affected by uh, variability in global economic uh, growth. Uh, if I may add a provocative uh, um, statement, I, I could even uh, argue, if you look at uh, those uh, high consumption areas, uh, I'm referring to those countries where most um, of the coffee is consumed globally, uh, namely the, the industrialized countries, uh, United States, uh, Germany, Italy, um, all the European countries, uh, I, I would even uh, uh, test the provocative statement that coffee is probably the most democratic uh, commodity you can uh, consume uh, because it's uh, so cheap. Almost every consumer in uh, highly industrialized countries can afford the best quality that is out there. It's absolutely no problem. It's just a problem whether you want to spend this money on your coffee or whether you don't want to spend uh, the money on your coffee. And you cannot say this of uh, many commodities that uh, every consumer can afford the best quality that is out there. You cannot say this of cars, you cannot say this of uh, wine, you cannot say this of many other food commodities, but in coffee everybody can consume or afford uh, the best quality that is there. It's just a question of whether you want it uh, or not, whether you just want the coffee in intake or whether you want uh, a feeling or emotion like Nespresso is uh, selling. Uh, they are selling a lifestyle. They are not selling uh, uh, a commodity. 
And it's a question of uh, perception by the consumer. It's not a matter of affordability whether you drink coffee or not. Uh, what I would like to add is that consumers, if you're a three-cup day drinker, chances are, no matter what, you're still going to have that habit of drinking three cups. But it depends on where you're going to purchase that coffee. And that's where some of the shifts came in. Were you getting it at Starbucks or were you getting it from McDonald's? Were you buying the coffees that um, you had preferred and then when the price skyrockets, are you going to be adventurous and try another type coffee that you might find is you like just as much or, or even better? So there were shifts in the type of coffee being consumed and the place of purchase. And that doesn't really show up in the bags, but it certainly does impact the, the middle of the supply chain, those providing the coffees. Thank you very much. I hope your question has been answered. Uh, are there any further questions, remarks? Please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rick Reinhardt. I'm the uh, Executive Director for Specialty Coffee Association of America. And I want to thank everybody for their presentations, uh, very informative. Uh, but my question is specifically for Mr. Anich. Uh, uh, you seem to have solved, along with a few others, uh, a conundrum that, that plagues coffee roasters. Every coffee roaster everywhere believes in their heart that if they raise their prices by a fraction at all, their customers will abandon them. And traditionally, they have uh, pursued quality downward in pursuit of a lower price to expand markets. You seem to have uh, overcome the consumer threshold of, uh, of, a, um, of pricing. What lessons could you share with us in terms of uh, shifting the consumer mindset from how many uh, cents per pound or kilo coffee cost uh, to shifting the mindset to the value of the coffee experience? Well, Rick, uh, thanks for the question. Um, I'm not sure what to answer to this. Um, obviously, it's all about yeah, what I said. It's about appreciating quality, and and um, that's what we have been trying to make um, people appreciate, which is um, is easy being said, but I believe we have come a long way. And I mean, you with the Specialty Coffee Association in, in the U.S. and David next to you is in Europe. Are you working uh, along the same lines? It's about. Um, getting people excited about coffee. It's about um, making them understand that there's so much into this, this product that is, um, is worth looking into. It's uh, something we have learned a lot from in, in the wine industry. And, and once, once you appreciate something, price becomes secondary. It's something you, you, you don't want to compromise for a little difference. And I think that that's the, the key um, to all of this and and we don't make any compromises on on quality um, we never change our blends we always um, continue to source from this particular reason no mat region no matter what the prices are doing on the green coffee side we're always paying the premium because we know that this coffee is precious and and the farmers have the choice they they have built this loyalty vis-a-vis -vis us because they know we are there since years we're buying the highest prices. They can go and walk around the corner and sell to someone else. This kind of coffee always finds a home. And I think doing that on the sourcing side with the coffee growers is is making it relevant for the consumers. Yeah. I, I can't give the exact figure, Rick. Maybe over a beer later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Just Two other questions in, in, in that corner. I think we, we take those two questions and then we're heading for a coffee break. Thank you. Um, Nicolas Perez from Colombia. I think my question's question goes to either three of you. Um, I'm, I'm wondering how do you see the developing markets and the producing, uh, the producing countries market in terms of shifting from low quality to high quality, from Robusta to Arabica. I see Nespresso opening their stores in Colombia, in Brazil. Um, do you foresee these emerging markets shifting rapidly from low quality to high quality and that becoming a market opportunity for uh, Arabica coffee and for 
higher quality producing countries like Colombia, Central America, and some parts of Brazil. Um, is that going to be different from the development of uh, well-established markets like the US, Japan, and, and Europe? Or is it going to be just the same way it's been traditionally uh, taking a long time to shift from low quality to high quality? So I just wonder, what do you, how do you see that market developing? So, <laughs> would you like to give an answer to that, Mr. Ulumbo? I, I don't know. I think Nespresso or Starbucks are even moving into Colombia. I don't know how about Nespresso, but I think there was recently an announcement by, by Starbucks that they moved into Colombia. So there is obviously also a market for the higher side of the quality pyramid in um, in, in many developing countries or coffee producing countries uh, uh, but I think it is uh, moving um, not at the same level as in, uh, in, in the more established uh, countries uh, um, where, where you have a broader customer base uh, and uh, where you can uh, more or less tap a certain share of this customer base uh, uh, into the higher quality brews uh, um, but I don't uh, see any problem in um, attracting uh, consumers to, to the highest qualities of coffee in the producing countries as well, but I, I think overall consumption there is uh, lower, so um, the, 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 the quality uh, improvements and, and uh, the share of uh, consumers uh, that, that drink these uh, uh, brews or the total quantity of uh, these brews uh, is developing, but I think it, uh, it's still um, um, rather modest uh, in, in if, if you compare it to total uh, consumption, uh, but but I think it will improve. Thank you, Mr. Ranish. Would you like yeah, to add something? Well, let me just because I said I, I got to provoke in my presentation. Maybe I didn't provoke enough. So I would not necessarily say that robusta is low quality. I think it's it's um, it's a coffee which has not been uh, recognized enough. I mean, in our own experience, we have um, looked into robustas and we looked into the way it is processed, and and actually you can you can get some very very nice coffees. Uh, which are, you know, when you prepare them in a proper way. They're just to, to clarify that, you know, it's not necessarily Arabica versus Robusta. And, and, and we have some, some of our Grand Crus have, uh, the, 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 the biggest amount is, is Robusta and people really appreciate it. So I think that's something, you know, I also want to play back to think a little bit about how can we make more out of Robusta. Um, now, you have seen the chart, I mean, the, the category of portion coffee is very, very small. So we believe there's a big growth potential, and that's probably also why we are, uh, you know, f why we got so much flattering from, from others and, and also moving into this category. So I think it's, it's normal that this is making its way geographically. We started in Europe, we're making our way to the United States, and we are in Brazil, you're absolutely right. So I, I think that that's, it's about what I said earlier, it's about appreciating quality, and that's not restricted to, to Europe or to the US or, or Japan. I think there, there are always people around the world who appreciate high quality coffee. Thank you very much. So one last question in the, in the back. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Noy Uganda, and my question go, goes to uh, Kasten. I think uh, I was really delighted by the statement that you want to ensure the value created by the farmers is not destroyed by volatility. What would be the benchmark for your value if it is not uh, uh, related to either cost of production or the market price? Thank you. Well, I don't, I don't have the figure on hand, and, and even if, you know, I, I don't have it. Um, I think it's it's very complex because it is depending on many many factors. It's depending on your productivity, your cost for, of production, your cost of labor, etc. Um, and we don't have the solution. It's um, we, we have been we have been trying to to address issues we know, such as the productivity, improve the quality. We paid premium prices to the farmers. Um, now, is is the future to have flat prices? I don't know. Um, I mean, competition is good uh, to a certain extent. We are experiencing that on, on both sides. Um, and that's why I, I try to play 
this back to the to this um, to this group here to to debate that and discuss that. We had several discussions with lots of people, and you know, the more people you have around the table, the more opinions you have, obviously. But I think it's worth debating and discussing what can be done.